Hey y'all, this week on the channel, I got a ton of information for you. Some of it good, some of it great, some of it not so great, and some of it really bad. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So we got Chuck and Bluegrass. They are into Roxylvania and are somewhere north of Duncannon and probably getting into big pointy rocks that come up and gang tackle you and rush, bum rush you and stick themselves right up like that. So they're probably in that area about now. Nichols, he is through Vermont and he is into New Hampshire. He uh, wanted to give us a trail maintenance update. He says that after the long trail split, the trail is very overgrown. It says there's a lot of high grass and trees that are encroaching on the trail. You get very wet with dew in the morning because, uh, or after the rain where it's canopied over and you're having to walk right through that. Uh, you know, I always try to push, hold my poles like this to push it out of the way, but it don't matter. You're going to get sopping wet walking through that. And the bad part about it is if you put on your rain gear, particularly this time of year, you're going to get sopping wet from the inside out anyway. Sweet Potato, she is around Front Royal and she sends in her update. Good morning. Just sitting in my hammock, uh, getting a late start to today. I scheduled a stop at a hostel and I underestimated my ability to get there. So for the next couple of days, I have to take it nice and slow. And lucky for me, the weather is gonna be fabulous. And it's almost 10 o'clock and I'm still not packed up and on the trail. I am coming into uh, Front Royal and I look forward to the resupply there and the quick stop at Mountain House B&B, um, and then I will be on my way. Man, I gotta tell you, slowing down is good for the soul. This past hike that I did, uh, I was in Virginia. I slowed down a little bit, not trying to do big miles, those 20 mile days, slowed down to, you know, a, a doable 16 and, uh, I just tell you the truth, I enjoyed it more. So slowing down is good for the soul. Uh, and looks like she is enjoying getting out of camp, camp there a little later than normal. Got to sleep in. Piercy, he is around Marion taking multiple zeros. He's trying to heal up a busted knee from White Top Mountain when he went through uh, Grayson Highlands and the Mount Rogers area there. Somehow he fell and busted that knee. And so uh, when he gets to... Um, when he gets to Harper's Ferry, because of you know, he's having to take it slow and he's having to do a couple multiple zeros, he's going to flip on up to the Pennsylvania-New Jersey border and start there. And so he's turning his Nobo Pure into a flip-flop hike. Boorah and Buttercup, they have made it to New York today. And they said they've seen eight bears in the last three days. But the really coolest thing about it is, is that they went to trail days and they got engaged right after trail days up on McAfee Knob. That is awesome. So uh, nice to see that, uh, that, that, that that's working out for them and everything. So uh, congratulations to them. However, I believe I would have made her be on the other side and I would have held the ring and since I'm, I would have been the kneeling person right next there to the edge of oblivion. Uh, so in any case, uh, started out, starting out right, starting out on the trail, doing what you love together. So that's awesome. Congratulations to you guys, Buron Buttercup. Slow and steady, he is done with Vermont and into the Vermud and he's into the white, sends in this update. Hey Ram Dino, slow and steady here. Just made it to Mount Mist in New Hampshire. I like that pun. Anyway, made it through Vermont with uh, pretty good weather and uh, got a good jump start on New Hampshire, just about ready to enter the Whites with Mount Musalak or Musalak Mountain. Uh, is the next climb after Mount Mist, but not today, another day. Anyway, the rains have come a little bit for New Hampshire. There are some muddy spots and lots of mosquitoes but otherwise all good. A little before Smarts Mountain yesterday, saw Mama Bear with two cubs. They just watched us and she protested us being anywhere near her because her cubs were up in the tree hiding from us. Other than that, I appreciate everything you do. And if anyone wants to see how we got to, to the White Mountains or how I got to the White Mountains, check out Hiking With Slow and Steady on YouTube and uh, see where I've been, where we're going. Hope to be in uh, Maine in a week week and a half. We'll see how bad or how good the white street is and the weather there. So stay tuned. 
Stick the Eagle, of course, he's hiking right there with Nichols. He's also in New Hampshire. Says he spotted a, a moose there between Stiles Peak and Peru Peak, which was, uh, so he said, which followed right after Bromley Mountain. So, of course, he's talking about in Vermud. Uh, but he said they hadn't got aggressive at this time, but you do need to have caution around because they are out. Uh, and he sends in this, uh, this video update. Hey, Rambino, it is Dick the Eagle here. You're having a great time here on Killington Mountain here in Vermont. We had beautiful views today. One thing I want to know is that moose are out. We have seen plenty of droppings around the area and black flies are also out. But nothing is taken away from our enjoyment of these beautiful furs. We're enjoying every moment of it. The terrain is pretty good. It's been pretty dry for Vermont. There's been some patches of dried mud, which we've been able to just walk right across but there are rains coming tomorrow, so we'll see if that changes. But we're enjoying it. We're about 50 miles from New Hampshire. We should be there by Saturday. So let's keep hiking, embrace the journey, and happy trails. Well, summer has come here to the East Coast and the Appalachian Trail and hiking trails all over the US of A. And if you're out there on trail, you're depleting electrolytes, getting dehydrated. You need something to get those electrolytes back into you, and that's Element Drink Mix. Here's a few other instances where you need to get those back into you. When you're trying to play Get the Bone from Coda. That's a losing battle. <laughs> oh God, like when you're Losing all your electrolytes in your tea kettle over keister on the Appalachian Trail. And you gotta get those electrolytes back in you fast. Ah. Yep, all those times are times that you need to have you some element drink mix on hand. Make sure that you are out there keeping those electrolytes back into your body. It's got everything in it that your body needs. A thousand milligrams of sodium. 200 milligrams of potassium and 60 milligrams of magnesium. No sugar, no junk, nothing in it that your body doesn't need to balance those electrolytes back out. Right now, if you'll go to drinkelement.com slash Rambino, they will give you a free sample pack of all of their flavors that they've got out there with any order of drink mix that you make. So go to drinkelement.com slash Rambino, that's D R I. N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash Ram Dino. Go and get you some. Matt Hermit, he is made it to Pennsylvania. He says in his trail update. Hey Ram Dino, it's Matt Hermit checking in with you from the Through It All Hostel at uh, mile 1086. Taking a zero day here on Thursday and uh, tomorrow we're getting back on trail and uh, going to finish out five more days to get to the pickup point with my wife and then take some time off. Um... The hostel here is great. Uh, the trail's been fantastic through uh, uh, Maryland and into Pennsylvania. Uh, it's uh, been very humid and hot and then rained yesterday. So uh, yeah, you can soak your clothes by about seven in the morning without trying very hard. But we're into summer. The crowds are reasonable. Uh, I don't think the big bubbles caught us yet. Uh, and we'll keep moving forward and hoping that won't happen soon. Hey, thanks again for all you do. Master Splinter and Leo, they are finishing up Massachusetts, and he sends in this video update. What's up, Ram Dino? This is Master Splinter and Leo from I Suck at Hiking. We are almost done with Massachusetts. Um, it's been beautiful. We've been lake hopping, but that also means there's a lot of bugs. That's why you see the new look. I've got the bandana wrapped around my ear holes so they can't dive bomb my ears like Luke Skywalker in the Death Star. So um, we're still going strong, looking at a uh, July finish at Katahdin. And yeah, I just wanted to give you guys an update. It's been a while. Uh, we've been busy, but we're still out here pushing it. And thank you guys for all of your support and love and reaching out and everything that you've been doing this entire trip. We appreciate the community and it's been absolutely wonderful. All right, we'll see you guys soon. So that's awesome. So I did Massachusetts last year as my lash, my summer lash. Uh, now I did it Sobo. And the thing about Massachusetts is 
Nubbo, you hit these cliffs there that are just absolutely gorgeous cliffs. You're coming up out of a ravine and you get up to the top of the mountains up there and you hit these cliffs. And to me, they rival Tinker's Cliffs down in uh, Virginia. I, I think they're better than Tinker's Cliffs. So, uh, and then you got a few more mountains to go over and it's re really a gorgeous, gorgeous introduction into Massachusetts. After then, it's a lot like the Green Tunnel uh, for a lot, a lot of the ways. But for me, what I really enjoyed most about Massachusetts was the people there. Uh, the people I ran into, the people I ran into off trail, some trail angels that helped me out, uh, Monica, the cookie lady, so all those folks. So uh, Massachusetts, I really enjoyed that. Polar Bear, Spamalot, and Super Squirrel, they got started on their subbo from Katahdin. And we did have a completion, so Night Shift, who is on his calendar year Triple Crown, he completed and summited at Katahdin. So uh, go ahead, send in, give us your update there, Night Shift. Hey Ramdino, uh, one last update here from Night Shift. I started walking down that mountain and then I realized, oh crap, I forgot to do something, which was to give uh, one last uh, Ramdino update. It's been so much fun watching everybody's updates and staying in, you know, in touch with where everyone is on the trail. Uh, I made it today here to the summit of Katahdin at uh, Baxter Peak. And I started January 23rd and hiked through the winter and I don't know, went through the whites and tons of snow. There's so much I could say, but I'll try to leave it short. Um, and I guess before I sign out, I just want to say truly thank you for the leadership effort you have held in the search for Sadie. Um, I met Bright Eyes and Sadie on trail, and I thought they were two of the coolest people uh, I met on trail. And I'm just very grateful for all of the work you've done to support them. Uh, and other than that, I guess one down and two more for me to go and i wish everyone behind me the best so now night shift like i said he is out on the pct and hit that so that was his last update for this channel i don't do the pct uh because uh it's enough doing this uh doing the at but in any case thanks a lot for number one congratulations uh for summoning on your calendar year triple crown and getting the first leg over and done with and they say the appalachian trail of the triple crown is the hardest trail of those uh, so congratulations on that and doing it all the way through without having to go back out uh, and there have been some other folks that are doing their calendar year triple crown but th to avoid the snow and everything they went out and so they didn't do straight through uh, on the on the at so they'll have to come back and finish up the at if they're going to get their calendar year triple crown but he finished up the at and is now on his way out to do the pct so thanks a lot for all your updates night shift Congratulations again, and it was really great hearing from you. So we did have some really sad, bad news uh, from this past week. It's very unusual for this to happen, but we lost two hikers uh, that were out there on the trail due to health reasons. Um, don't really need to get into what happened to them other than uh, that they died, I guess, prematurely. It was unexpected. So we had Epic. Uh, he had just left the Blackburn Trail Center and was going into Harper's Ferry. And my understanding was he was actually outside the AT uh, headquarters there. and was gonna get his name in the book and the Polaroid shot. Uh, and he passed away outside out there due to a, a, you know, an event that just happened. Uh, you know, um, something went wrong. It wasn't any, anything nefarious, it just something happened. So in any case, uh, he was a Lieutenant Colonel in the Air Force, uh, retired and uh one um very sorry for your fam family my understanding is that his daughter uh is uh, was also in the air force she's a air force veteran don't know if she's still active duty or not uh but if you're watching this uh very sorry our, our hearts goes goes out to y'all our prayers go out to you for those of us who, who do that uh and uh, the, uh, for those that don't good thoughts are coming are coming your way if they're not already there so we're very sorry about uh epic passing away and um, and just uh, hope that um, everything everything goes well from here on as you continue to your new normal now without your father. And then we also lost another hiker out there. Uh, we lost Twinkle Toes. So Twinkle to Toes actually had gotten off the trail and came home uh, on May 27th, and he passed away Monday after coming home. So. He again had an unexpected event that happened, and so don't know a lot of details from him. Uh, I believe that um, Epic, he had made it a thousand miles. Not exactly sure how far Twinkle Toes had made it, 
But in any case, again, to the Twinkle Toes family, if you're watching this, our prayers go out to you for those of us who do and for those of us who don't in part of the community. I know that there are good thoughts and, and uh, are, are heading your way. And so we just hope that uh, you can move on and, and um, look forward to brighter days now uh, with your new normal. As always, I want to thank y'all for your support out there, for your subscriptions and your comments and your thumbs up. All those things help the channel. Uh, and I especially want to thank those folks um, that have helped the channel in a more tangible way. So uh, we had some new Patreon members. That's Joss and Shells Wagle. So thanks a lot to you guys for doing that. They, they join in a big way. And so just thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for supporting the channel and believing in the mission of what I do. They also had a super thanks from Torch1979. So thanks again, Torch, for doing that. Uh, all those help out, help the channel. And folks that go to the merch uh, store and purchase merch, all those help join, help the channel here and help me keep on doing what I do uh, each and every week here and bringing that to you. So we got some news that's going on out there. So we got uh, Linda from the Blue Barn there in West Hartford, uh, Vermont. Uh, she has, when you hike down in the Vermont there, uh, you're getting on up to the northern end of Vermont and you're coming down into West Hartford. And as soon as you get on the road there, because it is kind of a road walk right there, you can see this big blue, and people call it a big blue barn, but it's really not a barn. It's, it may have been a barn at one time, but it's, they've really done it up and turned it into like, kind of like a condo there. So it's got two floors and they've got it set up for hikers. They've got a portage on there. So they are true trail angels right there on the trail. Uh, and it was really neat to when Come Along and I went through there a uh, year before last. It was just a lot of fun to stop. And we kind of took a Nero there. We were there for like about three hours just hanging out with some with a Tramley family uh, that were hiking together and uh, mom and her and her two sons. Uh, and then uh, also uh, just being there with Linda. So Linda is the one who owns the house there and is the trail angel. And on her back porch there, it's just, it's just so peaceful there. Uh, not a lot of traffic coming in and out of there. You can hear the river going by. She's always got some snacks and stuff there for people. And she's saying in that the farmer's market is now open from Tuesdays there in West Hartford from 3.30 to 6.30. Uh, so the farmer's market is right next door. And that was really neat, that farmer's market, because they've got food trucks there. So you got town food that's brought to you from on the trail. Uh, and one of the neatest trucks that I liked was the ice cream truck. I think I went back twice. Uh, but, they, uh, but they also had a hamburger truck. Uh, and then they've got some fresh vegetables from folks that you could purchase there and everything. So it's not a huge farmer's market, but boy, it was such a treat to have that there. And so Linda wanted everybody to know that that now uh, is open on Tuesdays through there. And then Whispers, our northern correspondent, he says the huts are open up in the Whites, although it's a little early for folks to be there. Of course, there are some folks coming into the Whites, and as we said before, night shift came through there. Um, but in any case, they are open now. Oh, golly, Daisy. Oh, my gosh. That was, what, uh, what was wrong with you, girl? I don't know what you're coming at me so fast for, but that kind of hurt. Anyway. Back to, back to the white, so they are open now uh, completely. So you can stay there. You might can go in and do work for stay. Definitely get uh, water and things like that. So uh, appreciate that. Whispers, you getting back to us on that. And then Spinos Cougar, he is our Vermont uh, trail angel correspondent up there. So he does trail magic in, up in Vermont. And he gets data from them, like pack weights, whether they had Noro or not. Um, and it's all none of us. It's all voluntary. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. But most people do the pack weights and stuff like that. It's very good data to have. Uh, and so he sends in some of that data. So the average AT thru hiker, and I say AT because the long trail is right in that. It shares the treadway with the AT in that area. And so oftentimes he's got long trailers on there as well. And so I'm only reporting about the AT because the long long trailers data is a little skewed because they really just got on trail so the average pack weight for the at is 22.25 pounds so that's pretty good weight the high was 33 pounds and this is just what he's had this past week uh and the low was 8.9 pounds so one of the reasons why we may have somebody that low of course 
even with food, that would be an incredible amount of weight, you know, low weight for a definitely well under ultralight weight. Uh, but where he sets up, he is like almost right before you're coming into town. Uh, and so uh, the, the pack weights are low there or lower than they typically would be if you were just coming out of town with a full food load. Uh, but that is trail weight. So that includes food, water, fuel, the consumables that you, that you normally have there. Uh, and then he also keeps up with the, the Nobo number that they have. And so he had a Nobo number high this week of 1,056 and they had left on March 13th and he had a low number of 370 and they had left on February 24th. Uh, so that kind of gives you an idea of where the Nobo hikers are as far as weight and who's in the area. Uh, and, and obviously the person with the larger, with the 1,056 number, uh, left later than the person with the number was pack, bag tag number 370, uh, but they have zoomed on past them. And then we have a bear report. So the ATC has reported a semi-sorta habituated bear. It... Uh, was not afraid. Um, it, 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 when it was run off, it came back. Uh, so it was definitely looking for food. It had a little fear of humans. And this was this latest report was at Moreland Gap Shelter in Tennessee there at Nobo Mile 414. So um, we've reported on several uh, shelters that have been closed, particularly in the Smokies. There's two closed at the very southern end. Uh, of the Appalachian Trail there in the in the Smokies and that's causing some pileups at the next shelter there where people are you know you having to bypass those two shelters you can't stay there because they're one right after the other uh, Molly's Ridge I can't remember the other name but the third shelter is where people are having to stay coming up out of Fontana where a lot of people start their hikes so that's causing a unusual uh, high amount of hikers there at that one shelter and then we mentioned this last week, but we're going to mention it again because it's a people can really get hurt, and that's the northern goshawks. Goshawks are out now uh, up there at Pierce Pond Lean To in Maine, and that's at Nobo Mile 2042. So we don't have a huge bubble going through there right now, but people are going to be going through there pretty soon, and this is their nesting season, and they are uh, very protective of their young, and so they are a bird of prey, which means they got talons. Uh, and a pointy beak and they will come after you. They will not think a thing in the world about ripping the top of your scalp open Or if you turn your head to see what's screaming at you coming in through the trees Taking an eyeball with them. So be careful out there. Don't look at them uh, <laughs> If uh, put your poles over your head Run through that section if you hear them screaming get out of the AO very quickly uh, And just keep in mind that they are there and uh, they can cause uh, some definite problems. Um, Sadie, the missing hiker dog, it was a bright eyes dog and bright eyes child is still missing. Uh, so bright eyes is Canadian. She can't be here legally now because she's was stayed here as long as she could. So she had to go back to Canada for a certain amount of time before she can come back and resume the on site search for Sadie. Uh, right now it's all online. So we've got a lot of people online and you can be a part of that that are looking at uh, Facebook pages and shelter site pages all the way from Southern Virginia down to Atlanta. We feel like she may have been abducted by a hiker that was uh, heading Sobo. Don't know if it was a section hiker or a through hiker or what it was. Uh, but in any case, um, if they finished their hike and by now, if they, even if they were Sobo, they would have gotten off trail, finished their hike, then they may have ditched Sadie somewhere. And so we're looking at everywhere that we can we're looking at hiker videos, Instagram photos of hikers, uh, of course, YouTube, uh, Facebook pages of shelters, website pages of shelters of, you know, these groups of missing dogs and found dogs and, and things like that. So Sadie is a girl. Uh, Sadie, of course, there's a lot of gray part labs that have a lot of, a lot of labs, older labs that have, that are gray around the muzzle. Uh, but she has a couple uh, distinctive spot so she got a spot right on her rear end where there's some white fur but she, the, the big thing is she her back left hind leg has a tumor on it so that's very noticeable on the back of her leg so um, I'll leave a link to the Facebook page down below where you can go and post lots of people monitoring that you can send it to me of course uh, bright eyes you can text it to her 
Uh, and she's also monitoring the Facebook page every day. Had a lot of folks that have sent in some dogs that looked a lot like Sadie. Unfortunately, it hadn't panned out, but keep sending those pictures of those dogs in and where they're at and where you saw them, what book, what Facebook or what page you saw them at, the link there to that. It only takes one to be right uh, for us to find Sadie. So appreciate everybody out there that's helping out with that. And uh, if you got prayer, if you pray, pray that, that Sadie will be united with, uh, with bright eyes, send her good thoughts, whatever it is you can do definitely if you can help out by going on the different pages and doing the on helping out with the online search that will be greatly appreciated i'm getting pretty excited going to be getting back on the trail in a couple weeks so i'll be getting back on trail at buena vista and heading north uh up around to um uh, it's gonna be about 35 miles i can't remember the name now reggie gap or can't remember the name now but anyway i think it's highway 58 58 something like that it's north of Buena Vista, 35 miles, so you can look on gut hooks and, and see that or whatever far out. Um, and, uh, and then I'll be coming back in July to the trail, getting where I left off there and heading on into the shanties. And then in August, that'll be in July, and then in August I'm heading up to Pennsylvania. Really excited about that trip because uh, that's my lash, to do a summer lash, 100 miles uh, pretty much every year for the last couple few years and so I'll be doing that and uh, going up there fresh grounds gonna be there supporting uh, and mainly fresh grounds gonna be there because he has uh, some contributors that are gonna be going through that area and so he wants to be there to support them uh, and I want to be there to meet him uh, and to meet the folks that contribute to the leapfrog cafe so that's awesome uh, and I'm also taking advantage of fresh ground being there uh, so if you ever had fresh grounds food before You'll know exactly why I'm doing that. That, and he's my buddy. I'm on his board of Leapfrog Cafe, and so I'm doing my part to, to support him and to meet the contributors out there. Folks, that is all I've got this week. As always, appreciate you, and we'll see you out there.